So in today's entrepreneurial series, we're talking about how successful entrepreneurs value their worth. Now, that's quite a big statement, isn't it? Uh, and, you know, in terms of that, it's really about having that self-belief, trusting your ideas, trusting in yourself, knowing that you're on the right path for you and not allowing others to sway you off your path. Yeah, so, and, you know, I think it's one of those things where it's something that you have to foster on a daily basis. Um, there are certain practices that you can do to boost yourself up in terms of that confidence and that self-worth. And I think, you know what I think is an entrepreneur or running with your business ideas is, and even if it's just how you want to feel about yourself, is that when you start getting feedback around what you're putting out there and you're seeing successes and the small wins, that's, cons that's going to incrementally boost you up. But I think you've also within self have to feel really grounded and you have to be able to manage your emotions and you have to be able to manage um, negative mindset as well and be in that state of positivity. But self-worth comes from loving yourself. It's about recognizing that you've got something of value to offer the world. It's loving your individuality, your uniqueness. And it also comes from quite a lot of strength and courage too, to be in business, to be an entrepreneur, to work for yourself. Yeah. Um, I'd love to know, and I think it's a really good thing to chat about, is when was there a time when others didn't believe in you and you took a risk and you believed in yourself and what was the outcome? Uh, you know, I've had all sorts of different businesses and... I think for me, you know, I've been in business with other people, but I love working for myself. And if I can share an example with you, uh, probably one of my most successful businesses was a global fashion jewelry business, yeah, which it was a bead and wholesale business as well as fashion jewelry. And I sold it both retail and wholesale. And I ended up with, I was servicing about 795 retailers worldwide with my products and about 3,000 customers, direct customers. And how did I start that off? Well, it didn't just go boom, darlings. It did not. Um, I can remember that I had, I was going through a bit of a change in life and I had gone and studied HR and did a diploma in HR, human resource management, right? Because I've done both corporate as well as working my own businesses. Nobody would hire me. I tried for a year. No one would hire me. And it was around about Christmas time, New Year's Eve, and I was on the back of a friend's boat on an island just off the coast of Western Australia, which we called Rotnus, yeah? So if you ever get across to Western Australia, uh, it's quite an idyllic island called Rotto. And it's often a boaty thing, but um, I don't have a boat, but I was on the back of quite a large boat, loved it. And my boys, had, who were quite young at that point, had given me this jewellery-making kit. Now, I'm quite artistic, right, but never made jewellery before. And I started making these little earrings whilst I'm, you know, laying on the back of this boat. And I was like, I wonder if I can make any money out of this because this is me all over. Yeah, I wonder if I can make any money out of this. And I put together, when I got home, I thought, well, I'll give it a go. So I put together this little range of handmade jewellery. And I literally wrote myself a script, a telephone script, and I just started ringing giftware shops and fashion shops um, that carried, like, you know, fashion jewellery and, and clothing uh, in Perth. And I ended up, and then I, you know, um, <laughs> and believe me, I thank God I had a script because don't tell me that there wasn't nerves going on there. And then I made appointments to go and see them. And within like literally a month, I was supplying about eight to 10 retail shops in Perth. And that's how I started with that. And I did it for probably, did that for about six months. And then I thought, you know, there's got to be an easier way of making money out of this. And this is when the internet was first starting off. Not many people knew, um, you know, Google was very basic, uh, websites were very basic, you couldn't do a lot with them, the template software was awful, and I started out on the internet, and that was when I first started learning online marketing. Nobody knew how to market um, at all, so I had to learn all of these skills and try and do some research and experiment and all sorts of things, and over time, I just experimented, experimented, experimented. Um, and I went from a really basic website that did not a lot in a year, right? And then I um, came into a little bit of money and I invested it back into my business and I got a professionally designed website and started doing wholesale trade as well as retail trade. And at the time, I didn't have a lot of support. I didn't have a lot of friends going, oh, 
you know, they did one that became successful. They're all on the bandwagon going, this is amazing and jewelry is amazing and blah, 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 but not at the beginning. And you've got to kind of find within yourself that ability to support yourself and to know your self-worth and that your ideas have value because a lot of the stuff that is behind the scenes that nobody sees is you working in your business. And it's you having that self-belief in your ideas. And did I have a vision right at the beginning of where that business was going to go? I actually didn't. I just started with my idea. Um, in hindsight now, when I start a business, I have a big vision, right? But in those days, as I was learning around businesses, I did not. And it grew over time. And, you know, I became an expert in marketing. And why do I say that? Well, for four years straight, that business was top of Google for every keyword for four years straight. Nobody could get me off. If they did, they'd knock me down to position number two on the first page, right? And I, But I had self-taught myself all of this and I'd self-taught myself a whole lot of stuff around business and, you know, importing and exporting and because you get to a point in a business where you can't do it all yourself. So I had to move from hand-making stuff to actually then importing fashion jewellery, making unbeaded. I did a whole beaded range because the bead craze was going off. I hope you don't mind sharing this because I think it's kind of valuable, yeah? And, you know, I had to do buying in um, – I was doing buying in – for packaging, I had to do all my branding, had some beautiful branding, and but I had to go into retail stores, you know, and I hadn't done any of that before. And I got my business so automated that literally I'd send a newsletter out and I'd just have orders rolling in and people would just be out of, and, and suppliers would just order through the website and spend a whole lot of time. I ended up having this huge room at home, right, full of stock and just packing it and packing it and packing it and had to hire somebody to help me pack it. Um, but it became automated and you want to kind of think about, you know, and this is kind of a transition where we go from being working on an idea and our love and then making it into a profitable business model and a scalable business model. But you still got to believe in yourself, right? And I would try different things because people would want, you know, particularly retailers would want new stuff all the time. So it was a lot of experimentation. I was importing from India, Czech, uh, the Czech Republic, uh, the USA, China, uh, all sorts of different countries I was importing from and, and then exporting all around the world. So I had to learn all of that as well, as well as in Australia. Yeah, so we're national in Australia, but a lot of my business was international. And, you know, if I didn't have that sense of self-belief and self-worth, I may never have started any of it, right? But sometimes you just, and I think a lot of it is when you get really comfortable with, I think I've got a great idea. And when you can start seeing results, you really cements for yourself that I have got a great idea, but you can never sit on your laurels, right? Because there's always, um, you know, you want to keep doing that repeat business and building things up. And, you know, if you're in some sort of business where you can get referral businesses, you're at the top of the marketing chain. But there's a whole lot of skill set around all of this kind of stuff. And we will go into a lot of it. But at the heart of it, you've got to have that confidence and love yourself enough to trust yourself because there'll always be people that won't know and get what you're doing. They will... Um, not understand your path, whether it's parents, whether it's siblings, whether it's friends. Some of your closest friends can be your biggest naysayers, which is really deeply hurtful, right? And then when everything's happening and going really well, they'll all be on the bandwagon going, well, how did you do that? This is amazing. And you feel like going, you know what, you never believed in me in the first place, but thank you, I'll take it with grace. Uh-huh. So you've got to be really strong within yourself, confident, courageous, and really, really believe in yourself. And you'll never know how far you can go, right, until you start. Mm -hmm. um, I hope you found this really helpful. And I'd love to hear, as I mentioned down below, share something with me um, and with our community. When was the time when you really believed in yourself and nobody else did? And what was the outcome? Love to hear it. Love to hear it. We'll all chat about it. Uh huh. Now, don't forget, before you go, hit that subscribe button, hit the like button, hit that notification bell so my videos come through to you in your feed. You can stay connected with me on Instagram and Facebook. I'll put my handles on here, all the info down below, and we'll chat soon.